Hi, my name is Mary Ann Kalmer, and I'm a farmer from Western Illinois. It's early Jan uh, July, and uh, we're out cutting wheat. And uh, so I wanted to shoot a little wheat video here and talk to you about some of the problems that I encountered early on, and then some of the solutions uh, to those problems, and hopefully make life a little easier uh, when you're harvesting wheat here in the, in the future. So let's talk a little bit about how combines are, are set up. Most of them, uh, John Deere combines, are, are gonna come out with seven chambers in the rotor area. Normally, we're gonna refer to the first three chambers as threshing, and the last four chambers are going to be for separating. But what's mostly important to me is, is the very first concave, and that's where we get into problems when we're in small grains, so wheat, oats, canola, things, things like that, and also some of the problems that we have when we harvest soybeans. So these combines normally come from the factory with round bar concave. So here's the, the round bar that came out of this machine, and the, the round bar has a 5 8 air gap between these round bars. So what happens is the wheat comes in past the feed accelerator and it gets into this chamber here and there's really nothing to restrict it and you can just see the wheat just falls right on through. And so in the combine under normal conditions, then it's going to drop into the auger bed onto the top sieve and then it's going to be in the bottom. We're going to go back to rethresh and then some of them are going to end up in the green tank. So. The main problem is round bar concaves, in my humble opinion, should not be used for wheat or oats or other small grains. And that's because the, the gap is 5 8 They make other concaves for John Deere combines. These here are small wire. And the small wire has a quarter inch air gap in it. And so you can see in, in this scenario right here that it's just pretty tough to get the wheat to fall through. So it has to rub wheat against wheat when it's in this area uh, right here. And that's how we're going to avoid the, the white caps that end up in the green tank, the tops are broke off, and uh, it's just a lot easier to thresh. We don't have to run the concave so tight, and we're just allowing the machine to do what it's supposed to do, is thresh the grain and separate the chaff and the straw away from the, the grain. So, in my opinion, when I'm cutting wheat, canola, small grain oats, I'm gonna go with small wire concave in chambers one, two, and three. Chambers one, two, and three, small wire concave. If I need to be a little more aggressive, and I learned this from a John Deere dealer out in Kansas. Uh, we were at the uh, Custom Harvesters Banquet. They also make cover plates. And here's one right here. And they can be used either on a large wire or a small wire concave. And right here on this is our, our number one chamber. I've got two cover plates on, you can see them. And this totally blocks off this chamber. So that means when the wheat comes in here, the, initially it's gonna fill up and then it's gonna become kind of like a mattress with speed bumps and that grain is gonna keep rubbing against itself. And then as we get it threshed, then we're gonna start opening it up and we're gonna let it drop down into the auger bed. Here, we'll let more of the grain drop, more of the grain drop, and then we get back to the separating grates in the back half of the machine. So, everybody always calls me on the phone. They say, Marianne, what's the part number for those things? So, if you have uh, your John Deere catalog, um, I'm looking here at page 63, not sure that it's always the same, but, but for those of you that are interested, small wire concaves. Part number is BXE10388. That is the small wire concave, sells for $3,256 each. So I'm roughly going to spend about 10,000 bucks just to buy the concaves that will properly thresh wheat, oats, canola, so on and so forth. If 
you're in tough conditions or maybe buckwheat and you're really having trouble, trouble rubbing off the last of the hulls and you want to install the cover plates, make it a little more aggressive, then the concave cover plates BH84534 and each one of these sells for $662, it's a piece of tin and you multiply times three, uh, I'm going to have an almost another $2,000 wrapped up here. So roughly $12,000 worth of parts. I don't know how many acres of wheat that you've got, but certainly uh, from an OEM point of view, uh, makes for a real nice machine. This, this combine, we, we were very, very pleased with the performance that we had, the ease of setting it. Now let's talk, uh, well also the phone calls I get are where are your settings at? So. On rotor speed, this year we were, we were in high. We were running at 720. Concave clearance, we were at three. Our top sieve, we were at 14. Our bottom sieve, we were at four. And the fan, we were running around 1,000. Like I said, got along pretty good. You know, uh, I'm, I'm sure there's people that can do a better job than that, but that gave us pretty close to where we needed to be uh, when we were uh, combining wheat. Now. The other thing I want to talk about is the grain loss monitor. So it's on the, on the right hand side and after you get the combine pretty well dialed in to what you like, then you hit the calibration and it automatically calibrates itself. Our calibration number was 21. And when we had the combine set up like this, the first bar is sieve loss. The next bar is a combination of sieve and rotor. The third bar is rotor loss and the last bar is tailings. And so you can see by this picture that we don't have a lot of sieve loss, we don't have a lot of rotor loss. But the really important thing about harvesting, whether it's corn, soybeans, wheat, or whatever, is that I want to balance this machine so that I'm maximizing both the rotor area and the sieve area. I don't want to overload one and underload the other. So I'm always looking at the sieve loss and the rotor loss, and I like to see the same amount of deflection right there. So um, the only other thing that I can say, certain crops, they, they do make cover plates that go onto the separator grates, and we've got one installed right here, and that'll help limit the amount of log or material other than grain that's dropping out of the chamber. That's the other problem we have in soybeans, wheat, and, and uh, oats, whatever, is that if we have too large of an opening, then as we're harvesting, we're getting too much of the stems and the coming down and, and overloading that chaffer. That's why we have to change things and we have to restrict that flow because we don't want to overload the top sieve. In corn, we want her wide open. We, we're, we, we struggle to get the corn out of this rotor cage uh, in 200, 250 bushel corn, 25%. So that's the difference. These limit the amount of mog coming down out of that chamber. So with that, I think I've covered most everything I wanted to talk about here today. And uh, hopefully this has been helpful. Uh, you maybe picked up one or two pointers. It'll make life a little more easy uh, when you're in the cab, make it a little more fun. You don't have to fight the combine trying to adjust it all day long. As always, uh, feel free to call me on my cell phone or send me a text message, 309-368-1182. Um, if you're interested in more information about our Cornhead company, uh, our web address, more YouTube videos, our web address is calmercornheads.com. And if you're interested in talking to somebody in our front office, that number is 309 629-9000. So with that, thanks for taking time out of your busy schedule. Hopefully I threw out a pointer somewhere along the line that will make your harvesting event more fun. With that, I want to say thanks for watching the video and have a safe harvest.